Hi guys, time now for my conclusions uh, realized from my research with my test units over there. Okay, let's go through this. One, unipolar generators at, are a paradox for textbook physics. Yeah, that's clear. Once you ask the back EMF question, uh, you violate a major tenet of physics no matter how you answer it. Go back and review the question. Homopolar and unipolar machines are capable of very steady but low voltage. Yeah, yeah, it's very low voltage. Uh, you need that voltage up to drive the current because the current's going to trace it upwards. The current capacity of solid rotors is enormous, limited mainly by the brush system. Yeah, quite true. The, the discs themselves have a very high current capacity, very low resistance, but the brush system usually is the cap uh, on that. So if the voltage is raised, the current will follow. So we need to get the voltage up in these machines. That's 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 the whole the whole premise here. That's what I'm trying to do. Raise the voltage, stabilize the output, um, and take advantage of other aspects of this dynamic. Okay, so to voltage multiplication is clearly possible. Yeah, with this machine over here, this one over here, it's got 24 times the voltage output. Measured on AC on the meter, uh, dead on, 1.0 volt at 1,000 RPM. That's 24 times the solid disk of this machine here. Okay? All right. Uh, I've clearly multiplied the voltage of a solid disk by 24 times. Uh, I have a machine that can be tested for current. Also, yeah, that 24 times voltage machine can't be measured for current, but this one here at two times the voltage, it is a stout machine. It can be measured for current. I would like that machine tested for current. Okay, several over unity principles are embedded in this design. Yeah, go check out my presentation at the Electric Universe Conference in 2015. Uh, for more information there, there are at least three different methodologies by which this machine could go over 100% efficient. All right, do the research, check it out. Okay, voltage measurement on these simplified mock-ups is observed as stable on AC meter setting. Yeah, covered that. So we right now we're reading on AC because with a graph like this on an output, it's not stable, there's a lot of chatter, there's probably... All right, conclusion number three. All right, although these discs performed well for the second ever production run, they are not capable of testing for back torque, amperage, power, or efficiency. It remains clear that better rollers are needed that will improve current capacity and rolling resistance by many orders of magnitude each. So I must point out that yeah, I'm looking to build another machine. These machines are just, you know, these machines, I've done a lot with a little here, but I've done all I can do. Uh, I have very limited resources. I need to move to another level if I'm going to keep building segmented disks and testing them for efficiency. Uh, I need to move to another level with in, term of, in terms of these rollers and brushes. Um, I have on hand uh, the next generation of AutoCAD files, uh, and I've moved up to 6-inch diameter magnets. I have them on hand. Um, these magnets I've been working with are 4.5-inch diameter, um, but the next ones will be 6-inch with uh, tapered roller pin rollers on spring-loaded high-precision ball bearings. So this video series is now concluded as funding is requested for me to move to the next level and build a machine with bearings and tapered roller pins. Uh, it's a more complex machine, but it'll carry a whole lot more current and we'll be able to really test the thing for efficiency. Okay, thank you for watching.